I'm audio. Sound and no, can't say something retarded. I, I was gonna say audio sound incarnate, but what does that mean? Is that even real? Like, would would he, would a human being who wants to be liked by anybody say something like that? No, I don't even. I didn't even. I didn't even pick this name for like any reason. You know why I picked the name audio? You really want to know? Because it's short, it's easy to remember, and it starts with an A. So it's at the beginning of lists. That's why I picked that name. Doesn't that piss you off? I bet it does. All right. Anyway, this is a scene regular people get like a long time ago. I just stationed Heita with Roga and Sane. Like a normal human being would see this scene much earlier in the game. Cause a normal human being uses Heita and Sane in their primary team, I think. I never did that. My first playthrough, Heita was a main guy. Sane wasn't because I didn't like her, you know. I've gone over that, <laughs> I think. Um, and of course, Rogue is always a main dude. You always use him, so. But yeah. That's, a, that's an important scene that I, you know. I, I guess I could have thrown it out there sooner, but it's not like it hurts the game to have it, you know, where I did or whatever. Um, once you have spoken to Von Dane and you need to get his parts back, you interrogate people. It's one of the few times in this game that interrogations lead, yield anything. So, let's go. Interrogate her. Oh my god, and I get an item instead of what I wanted. My whole face. Whatever. I got a good item from it, and it's one that people who've played some Goku Rants will remember. Um, hell, the item may have been in Dai Kuji, the game that came out before Dai Tekoku and Dai Bancho. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But, I'll go to it right now. There you go. Look familiar, strange quick bug, plus 10 evasion. Give that to someone like, uh, you know, I don't know, Heita. Heita's good, Daigo's good. You know, short range people typically. Um, I guess I'll give it to, well, Daigo's already got good evasion. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'll do with it. I'll give it to someone who's got good evasion and it'll make them immortal. How does that sound? And I don't know why Daigo's not a demon yet. Maybe I'm retarded. Maybe I did something wrong. I have no idea. We'll give this to Mario. Um, might be delayed, might whatever. I don't... I don't know. We'll go and see. Um, I'm seeing what I need to do on the map, and... You know, I'm like... That rebellion still there. Just leaving it. I'm gonna leave it. Um, oh, uh, next part was Shion, I guess. We'll do that. Um, you know, you, you need to activate the last one with her. Um, I, don't think, I think this leads to her recruitment. I don't need to do it again. Uh, this is a long scene, and it's kind of sad, you know? All of Xion's events are sad. It's not like it's new, you know? It's not like it's a new concept. Um, it's all... It's it's a fairly cliche situation, but it's still sad. I mean... It's whatever. And... That's one of the few cliches that I like, you know? I don't know why she pronounces yes like that. I, I have no idea. I don't get the joke if there's a joke or, you know, whatever. <laughs> so. Doesn't age. She's an experiment. I've kind of gone over that. You'll see more about her and, you know, you saw the scene in the last video and if you're perceptive, you can tell what's going on. Um, I was able to pretty quickly. Um, and if you weren't able to tell what was going on in the last one, it's extremely explicit here, so, you know, and it's kind of terrible, like, you know, Rogue has just got to be like, this is obvious, you know, I mean, he's, he's dead, he's been sitting here for how long, you know, it's just some corpse, and Xion, you know, she isn't, she's not a human being, and she doesn't, she doesn't understand the concept of death, you know? She has no idea what the, what the deal is, so it's, it's terribly sad, and, you know? 
It's it's even you know it's it's even sadder because Shion is a child basically. I mean, look at her. She's she could be a teenager, but she's still you know she's a robot, so she you know she doesn't really have an age. I mean, I guess she's a robot. You know, I mean that that I don't even think they say that explicitly, but I I, I assume that she is for for some reason. Um, yeah. So Roga has to, you know, the only guy in the whole goddamn village, apparently, who cares about this little girl who does everything on her own, you know, Roga, some outsider, is going to come in there and do everybody else's job for them, you know, like, really, though? Nobody else in the town picked up on this. Nobody else on the town realized that the guy wasn't moving around, wasn't doing stuff. You know, nobody spoke to Xion to find things out. Ugh. That happens in real life, too, which is pisses me off all the time. You know, I mean, this exact situation doesn't happen, but you've heard about stabbings in daylight where nobody reports it. Because they don't want to be held responsible or have to deal with the shit. Pathetic. Anyway, I still like this scene a lot, and, you know, if if this scene happened, it's one of those things where, like, Ellisoft cared about this scene to set you up for it. They introduced you to Xion and things beforehand, and they showed you what her life was like beforehand, before Roga met her, you know? So you were, you know, they made the scene better by setting it up. They didn't just throw this portion of it at you and were like, oh, hey, you're supposed to care, because, you know, you wouldn't. So, yep, handled well, presented well, a good uh, part of the game. And you know, again, you don't have to recruit Xion. If, if you're playing this game your first time, you, it's not like you're obligated to recruit her. You may not recruit her. Um, the first time I played the game, she didn't go to heroin status for me. I didn't know she was a heroine. So... I just had her as a unit, and I didn't really talk to her enough because I was busy increasing other people's loyalty. So, you know. That's like, that's like my biggest gripe with this game, having to fix people's loyalty instead of talking to people and getting things like this. Um, yeah. But that's also a good thing about the game if you like micromanagement, you know. It's, it works both ways, it's just my preference. Um, so, now you get this thing. You understand the situation. And I mentioned before that Tsukiyomi Yu, or Yo, is, um, and I think brothers with Kibito? I think that's what, I think they're brothers, siblings. I don't, I don't recall exactly, but they're related. So you know that. And you know, I, I told you that I like this part of the game, so naturally, delving more into this part of the game is something that you'd want to do if you liked it, and recruiting Kibito allows you to do that. Um, all of his events are basically, well, not not all of them, but they're all tied to Xion in some way, and I believe they're both required for each other's character clears. I know Xion's required for his, but I... I don't recall whether or not he is for Xion. Probably, though. But. Yeah. So that's that's what happened, you know? Like, he died, Xion didn't pick up on it, and she just kept making him food and bringing him food and living by him and thinking that, you know, he was asleep. It's just so innocent and, yeah, you know? Doesn't it, like, poke your heart a little bit? At least a little bit? I mean, hmm. And, you know, they chose the right character design for Xion. If they had chosen, like, a grown woman, it would be, you know, less sad and less innocent feeling, you know? But, yeah, this is, I, I believe this is where she joins you, and you can use her as a unit. She's a long-range unit. She's a Maha Shoujo. Um, magical girl, so... 
That's how that goes. She has a very unique second skill, and it's pretty good. I mean, I don't remember the exact mechanics of it. It, buff, it buffs everybody on your, you know, that's deployed at that time. But I don't remember the exact stat boosts, so I'll have to see it. Um, but yeah, she's a long-range unit, and she's she's okay. I mean, you know... She's not as good as Tomoko power-wise. She, I don't think she has good evasion or anything, but you know she has, like I said, a very unique second ability. So, and it kind of makes a weird relationship with Roga and Shion, but not a bad one. You know, like her becoming a heroine is it it fits. It's not you know she's not like Cleo where she's really appearing as Roga's child, you know? Xion is not, like, Roga's daughter, figuratively. That's not how I see it at all. But I see that with Cleo, definitely. And Xion is not like Cleo. So. You know. I'll talk more about it later once I think about it properly, you know? I gotta... I gotta work on that, but I'm gonna make her a heroine. I'm gonna talk to Shion a lot so you guys can see all of her sequences. Hopefully you like it. I mean, if you're one of those people who despise good storytelling, then, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry that you have to go through some of the best story in the game, but that's what's going to be happening. Um... Actually, I'm, all the women that can be heroines, I'll make heroines. I'm not going to leave any of them sitting at the sideline. Um, but, yeah. On my first playthrough, I, I didn't talk to Shion at all. and I didn't make her a heroine. Um, you know, loyalties are actually looking pretty okay right now. It's just this jackass here, who I don't even need anymore. I don't even need Tomari anymore, because I got his event with Kanagi. So, he's just there. Um... I, I'm not gonna talk to him now even. I, I just don't care about him. Um, and I will talk to Xion. She has a big blue heart too, by the way. She won't leave you. I don't think any of the heroines will, actually. At any point. Um, they, they're all, you know, they're all acquired with unique events. And more effort has been put into all of their recruitments than, you know, generic people. So, they like Roga more. And, you know, Xion basically took Roga as her new master, you know. So, that's what's up. But, yeah. Um, you know, well, obviously they're going to age, so it's kind of weird. You know, not now, not in this scene, but, you know, Xion doesn't know anything about anything, really. She's just kind of learning. So, that kind of should summarize how their scenes go. Um... <laughs> If you're into that, I guess. Uh, I don't really have an opinion on it. I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what I mean here. I don't. It's not my thing, but it's also not not my thing. You know, it's just whatever. I'm neutral, so that's how that goes. Um, yeah. But I'll be using her a little bit. I mean, she's not gonna be like a core fighter. She's not. She's not good for that, really. But, uh, I don't need this territory anymore. I'll still take it, because it's so close to being done with, but these people need to rest badly. <laughs> they, they got kind of obliterated. A lot of my units did. Um, and I need to look through this and organize it. I've been a little rushed with this, because I don't want to waste so much time for people, and I don't want to... You know, you know what I mean? I don't want to waste a lot of time just doing stupid shit on these screens, but... There's a lot I need to do that I that I neglect all the time. Um, actually, Yuki needs to go here. I didn't have him there yet. Um, Daigo is gonna go up here and fight. Um, Mario will too, actually. Kyoichiro will rest. She's gonna go, but she's not gonna fight. She's just gonna be there. Um, Shion's gonna go. Um, God, I could send Mummy. I haven't done anything with Mummy. I don't even know when income phase is, guys. I'm so out of it right now. Um, I think I've got another turn. I hope I've got another turn or some shit's gonna go down. Um, Kanako can go. Oh, wait, it's full. Mm. 
Mario can sit out. Fucking cannot go. Where are you at? My god. My god! There we go. Okay. That's fine. I have it under control. If they attack Sapporo, then that's just too bad. That's how it's gonna be. Um, Aya's not gonna be there either. She'll go there. That's fine. Cleo's gonna solo defend that place if they attack it. And it'll work out, because Cleo is, you know, she's Cleo. Um, I guess I'll take this before more units show up. I don't think more units will show up, but I'll just take the territory anyway. Um, and worry about the other one later. So. Oh, good. More, more of this, because I haven't run out of things to say here yet. Um, you know, like, I, I don't know. And also, I don't know if it's just me, but every time I look at the vampires, I see their hair as a turban. I can't get around that. Like, I see his orange hair as a turban. At least, at least tell me you can see that as well. Tell me I'm not completely deranged, I guess. It's not like it's a huge issue, you know? Like, oh god, this guy sees hair as a turban, you know? Okay. Not interesting, I'm done talking about it. But, yeah. So, uh, oh yeah, my mouse is on the words again, as usual, because I still haven't remembered that. Um, oh, could it be Miller? It is. Miller's coming to talk to Camilla, and I'm willing to bet that this is what forces Miller to start attacking me with bats and be annoying. Very annoying. Um, oh, and a lot of the units that I pulled off for, like, health recovery, um, I don't... I don't think I need to do that with Kunagi, because I think because of story events, she's just automatically full health and full stamina, but I don't remember. I'm not sure about that. So I'm gonna let her heal anyway. But, you know, aside from that still, people like Rogan need to heal because, um... You know, there's going to be a showdown, of course. You can count on that. Assume in this game, I probably should have said this before, but you can assume in this game, when you're about to take over an enemy faction, there's going to be a showdown involving Roga. So, whenever they're almost done, you want to make sure that Roga's healed up pretty well. Um, in this case, in the case with the Nightmare Eyes and with the PGG, I was able to trigger the showdown, you know? I didn't have to, you know, it wasn't a surprise, like, oh, here's Roga with 10 health and 1 stamina, you know, do battle with these three guys. You know, I was able to decide when I was going to do it, and, you know, I could be prepared for it, but, you know, to streamline things, I'm going to prepare so I don't have to wait and do nothing for three turns while Roga heals. I'm just gonna go into it like a boss, and, uh, yeah. I'll be finishing the Nightmare Eyes off early enough for... A pretty annoying bonus character to show up, actually. I have to just admit, she's annoying as hell. Um, but she'll be around, and you'll see her. I'll talk about it. Yep. <sighs> but, uh, you know. This is exactly what it is. <laughs> it's just... Miller with a terrible character design. Well, I guess it's not really a terrible character design. It's one that I despise, though. Um, so. Yeah. That is all. Um, yeah. Started editing the Alisoft wiki, too. Um, I guess I can say that. I... Well, I mean, stuff like Daibancho is really fleshed out on there. There's not much to add. There's not much to do. Um, same with Sengoku Rants, but Daite Koku has, like, nothing on it. It's it's very disorganized, and I have a feeling that I'm going to have to be the dick face who goes into what people have already done and then delete large portions of it because it's in the wrong area. And, you know, I don't like doing that because the pers the people who have edited what's available can obviously understand Japanese and English so they you know what they've done is worth more than what I'm going to do but it needs to be organized properly you know what I mean just putting that out there because it's a nightmare I've seen with Miller and Camilla again and I don't have anything to say about them like their relationships very obvious it's it's so obvious You know, so. 
And, you know, the Cat Bond show. I'm glad that they introduced him before because he's been so relevant and helpful to the Nightmare Eyes, right? I mean, I'm, I'm bringing him up because he's here now. I knew he was going to be in the scene, but I mean, have we interacted with him? No. Have we interacted with Miller? No. Have we interacted with Camila or Pram? No. But, you know, it's, it makes sense for the Bathories because they are the leaders, you know? You don't typically fight the leaders right away. The Cat Boncho's not a leader, he's just a thing. And he doesn't do anything. <laughs> he's, he's a horrible unit. I mean, I'll tell you that now, too. He's, I'm not recruiting him. I, I think I've gone over how to recruit him. I'll do it again later. But he's not a good unit. He's not worth recruiting. Unless you like his design. And even then, it's... I mean, I can, I can look at things from a technical standpoint and be like... You know, that's why I try to be informative when I do Let's Plays. Like, I, I, I'm mostly an informative person and an opinionated person. I think I got that right. But, you know, I can I can make room for preference. I can say, yeah, this guy's shit, but if you like the way he looks, pick him up. You know, I can say that, but I mean, I look at the Cat Bound show and it's just like, no. He's not ever worth it. <laughs> Even if you like him, he's just not worth it. Unless you really, really, really love him and... I can't see anybody really, really loving him. So, you know. I, I, the same with Miller. I can't see anybody really, really loving Miller, you know. Shit, I have an easier time seeing people loving the cat poncho than Miller, and both of them are unlikable. And Miller is not even recruitable, so how's that? But, uh, you know, I mean, I do that when I play games. I, I make room for things I like. You can believe that. You should. It's the goddamn point. Um, I haven't done anything with Mummy yet. She's pretty strong, you know? Like, I I said that she's a bad unit and all that shit, but, you know, she comes... I, I character cleared Mummy, I think. So she comes with better stats than you would have her come with, but... Anyway, her ability reduces the enemy's stamina by two, and it costs two of her stamina. Situationally useful, I use it about never. So, that's how that goes. But, I mean, Mummy's a good combat unit. She's got high attack, um, really high evasion for somebody in the game. And, you know, look at her hit. It's pretty reliable. She's she's a reliable unit. Um, oh my god, why? She's cute, too, you know. She sounds cute. So, that was my fault. I should have known that that jackass would have been attacking, and I didn't assume it, so... And, can I call? I'm just going to use her ability because... Because I don't, you know... I just wanted to come in here, kill two people, and leave. That's basically what I'm doing with her. Um, and I haven't gotten her uh, clear yet. Her, Well, I mean, I character cleared her on my own, but I haven't gotten her little... You know, whatever it is. Her character check that increases her stats exponentially. And that's coming up sometime. It's it's quite good. Um, I guess I'll attack with Xion so you can see what she's like. Even though it was a long range guy, I mean, she has good hit, so I wasn't worried about that. But, you know, I could have read her ability too, and I just didn't. Yeah. Oh, I forgot all about this. I forgot all about their travels. Kine and Maz travels across the world. And, you know, it's they don't travel in an organized way, or at least they don't show these scenes in an organized way. They were at the Nightmare Eyes a while ago, right? Now they're in the NPI somewhere. Later on, they're going to swing back over to Tatori, which is the most illogical travel pattern possible, but it is what it is. Um, the places that they visit and they do these scenes for are also kind of, you know, related to where you've been. You need to go to, like, the Mu Empire for them to do the scene there. And that's probably why I'm going to go there, because that scene is golden. Um, and it would be it would be negligent of me not to show it. But Oh yeah, if you couldn't tell, Kine's a badass. She's one of the most badass characters in the game, just so you know. I mean... 
Well, I don't need to tell you that. You already know. It's obvious. Because of her actions like this. Um, I like Mao more, though. I like him. Uh, Kane, she was one of my favorite characters at first, you know? I liked her a lot, but I started liking her less when she became a heroine. So, I don't know why. It's just... Eh. You know, it, it feels like she shouldn't be a heroine. Roga should be a hero option for her, you know? <laughs> that's how it feels, and that's why I didn't like it when she became a heroine, you know? I don't know. You get what I mean? It's like role reversal kind of thing. She's a really tough, independent girl who then suddenly around Roga isn't. And I don't... I like that a lot less, so... But... Whatever. Hmm... nice, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh my god, Kanagi leveled. Oh my god, Kendo level. I don't even... You know, you'll notice that I didn't use Kendo in combat, right? She just had a lot of stored up XP. So, you know, if somebody goes over the XP limit, they don't multi-level. They won't gain two levels in one phase like this. They'll just store it and then gain a level the next turn. Same with Ren, you know? I guess the dungeon gave a lot more experience than I had thought. Um, whatever, I'll see you in the next part.